Dr. Rogers here. So in the following video footage, you're going to see that was taken from a dentigerous cyst removal in an old English sheepdog. So dentigerous cysts commonly form in um, brachycephalic dogs or our short-faced smushy breeds like Frenchies and Boxers and English Bulldogs uh, because their first uh, premolars on the bottom don't often erupt as they're supposed to. And so what happens is when that tooth stays underneath the gum line or underneath the gingiva, it can form a cystic lesion. So it's very important, especially with our short-faced dogs, that we look and see if those teeth are there. Some dogs just don't have them, which is fine or that they haven't erupted. And the only way to do that is with an x-ray. Uh, this was actually an old English sheepdog that um, had two uninterrupted cysts or uninterrupted teeth that formed the cysts. And so not a common breed. Uh, his dad actually is a human dentist and an oral surgeon. So um, pretty ironic. And he was really happy when he was able to review this footage. So thank him for letting us share it. But uh, with Dandy, we um, dad noticed a swelling on the bottom. So he obviously brought him in. We realized at that point in time that the lower premolars had become were uninterrupted and formed a cyst. So we, this is removal of those, and Dandy recovered and did well, and he's no worse for wear. So thanks again for his dad for allowing us to share this footage. But it's very important that if we have teeth that are missing or if we don't see them in a dog that we take x-rays because just because we don't see them above the gum line doesn't mean they're truly not there. They just may be uninterrupted. So enjoy the footage. Thank you. Okay, so now we are going to basically open up the gingiva over top of this lesion, and you can see there that cystic fluid is uh, expressing out. So um, we're gonna use the periosteal elevator and pull the gingiva down so that we can expose all of that area and get to the cyst itself, and then also remove the tooth, which is actually what the problem is. And sometimes this is a little bit more difficult to kind of peel away. This is certainly a young, healthy dog, so grabbing a scalpel can help if the periosteal elevator isn't getting the job done like you need to. Perfect, there you can see that the periosteal elevator is just really kind of falling into place. And then the tooth is right there that actually is the problem. So the uninterrupted tooth is sitting actually just below the gingiva. And so we'll go ahead and remove that and then follow the draining tract back. And there it is. It's amazing that one small little tooth can cause that big of a problem. But that's why it is so important to make sure we're counting teeth and knowing what it is. So you can see the bottom of that tooth is a little damaged from the dentigerous cyst formation. So um, we'll just go ahead and clean this pocket out now. Because if we don't, um, we will still have a problem with the lesion. So basically there's a cystic lining that can see here we're going to pull this out and clean and debride this whole thing. Once that's empty then we will pull um, that gingiva back over top of that lesion and so now I'm taking a drill and actually cleaning up that bone. So this is a diamond head burr and so it basically smooths and cleans this pocket out and helps us to bride any of this um, tissue and you can see there there's quite a large hole that's going down from where that cyst was. And so once it's all cleaned out we will bring the gingiva up but that diamond head drill bit is one of my favorite tools to kind of help smooth down the bone. It helps to bride the tissue that we don't want in there and it actually is quite gentle with um, the surrounding gingiva so it's definitely a must-have for any type of veterinarian doing dental work but yeah there's the big hole and you can actually see um, a little bit of how the neck of the tooth there uh, the neck of the canine tooth is exposed so now we'll bring that gingiva back up we have plenty of play and we'll get it closed and now we're on to the other side so you can see this side um, there is not quite the large amount of pocketing that we could see on the other but nonetheless he had both of these first premolars on the um, mandible so we call those then if you number they're numbered 305 and 405 so now we're working on 405 which is on the right side of the mouth and so same thing they were starting to form a cyst while it wasn't as large as the other side we needed to address both of them at the same time so the same thing i'm going to use the um, periosteal elevator to kind of pull the gingiva back and expose the area that we need and then we'll do the same procedure as far as debriding the tissue 
removing the unerupted tooth and then making sure that all of that cystic material is out of there. We'll bring the gingiva up and close it uh, to protect the wound. And then this guy goes home same day. Uh, he will have instructions and things that um, limit what he is able to eat and play with. I will tell you, spoiler alert, he did go back to playing with his toys pretty quickly and I did have to tell his dad, we don't wanna do that. But here you can see, there's the tooth that was sitting again right underneath of the gingiva, it just didn't erupt. But we do have restrictions after these guys go home because of the stitches in their mouth. We don't want them necessarily eating hard food or, or playing with uh, toys and things that are going to cause those stitches to rip open. But there you can see that tooth elevates out pretty easily, thankfully. Some of these teeth are really buried down in there and these were not, so that's helpful. So um, we always take x-rays before and after these procedures to make sure that we've removed all of the bone and all of the tissue. So here's a different angle. So again, you can see that there's uh, some granulation, some cystic material in there. So we're going to clean that out with the drill bit and pull all of that out of there so that we don't have any additional lesions or any further problems. There's my diamond headed drill bit. One of my favorites and I love that high speed piece with the light on it. So it really kind of helps See everything that you're doing and as we take that bone back you can really see that granulation tissue that's flopping around in there so just grab a pair of forceps and start to pull it out and debride it sometimes you have to it's a little bit um, thick and adhered so we have to use a periosteal elevator to get it off of there excellent you can see that's a pretty big chunk of cystic lining This guy will feel much, much better. But yeah, that's a pretty big chunk of tissue. And you always wanna make sure that the, it's all gone and you've scraped the entire pocket. Thankfully, this owner caught this quickly. He's a human dentist and an oral surgeon, so he recognized that there was something going on. We talked about it and we had this dog in for surgery uh, pretty immediately. So it's really nice when we can collaborate with our human counterparts and it makes it really wonderful when we have such great and understanding owners and he recognized that you know, we needed to address this pretty quickly. So there's the sulcus now. It's quite the large hole. We're gonna bring that tissue up and get everything closed. <laughs> 